This is a presentation on the interpretation of abdominal radiographs by Kate Evans, a PA student at A.T. Steele University. First of all, to understand abdominal radiographs, we need to understand x-rays. Uh, think of the x-ray machine shooting the x-ray beams through an object with a plain film behind it, catching the x-ray beams, essentially. The more radio-opaque an object is, the, the less beams will travel through it. Um, so it will show up more as a, as a white on the film. It will be less exposed. The more radiolucent an object is, such as a gas, um, will be more, it will show up darker on, on the uh, x-ray. So the two terms you really need to be familiar with when understanding x-rays are radiolucent and radio-opaque. Now, when we talk about abdominal x-rays, there's a few things to remember. And these don't really just go for abdominal x-rays, but x-rays in general. Um, first of all, things you need to look for. Um, you need to look first for symmetry. Um, looking for symmetrical things that, that should be symmetrical. Now, not all of the uh, organs in the body are symmetrical, but but um, the ones that are you need to be very aware of and you also need to look for things that are too, either too light or too dark too big too small and also looking for things where they should not be too light and too dark can mean either they are more dense or less dense than they should be they can be signs of gas or fluid in the abdomen um, too big and too small of course can be um, neoplasms or obstructions or anything um, also atrophy and and other other pathologies and of course things where they shouldn't be is pretty self-explanatory and they will show up on uh, x-ray as well I quit and want to be free is a as a mnemonic you can learn or you can remember to help you help you learn and remember the things that you need to look for on an x-ray First, the I for identify. Identify when you identify the uh, X-ray. You want to first look for the ID of the film. You want to look for the correct name and the date of the film, and also the position the film was taken in. The position is important because of the possibility of maybe missing something like air fluid level. If the patient is supine and the film is not taking as as and maybe you expected the film to be taken from uh, an upright or an erect position well air fluid levels won't show up to you like like they would um, in an erect position the next one would be quality quality is both um, pertaining to the position of the patient uh, maybe how still they were holding and also proper exposure Maybe maybe the image was under or overexposed, making it either too light or too dark, and really not being able to see the things which you're looking for. And also artifacts. Artifacts can show up, maybe look like um, a pathology when actually it's just the patient forgot to take off um, jewelry or or clothing, um, or something was in the way of the X-ray causing it to to be unclear. The next one is A for air. Look for air um, for gas. These will show up darker in the images because of the radiolucency of the of the air. The, because of its very low level of density, um, the the X-ray beams are able to pass right through it and expose the the plane film very clearly. Um, so these can show up in, of course, air fluid levels. They'll show up as dark on the image. Water, uh, water can be found in the abdomen. It will show up a little bit more radio opaque because of the relative relative um, density compared to the to the air or the gas. You also need to look at bones. Bones are um, a good way to identify both landmarks, things you're looking for. And you know, even if you didn't take the x-ray looking for pathologies or um, problems with bones, it's always a good idea to look for them while you have the films. And the last one, 
F um, for free is look for funny things. Look for funny looking things, I should say. Um, extra findings, maybe things that that uh, you weren't looking for. Look for foreign bodies or overlying artifacts, maybe shadows or uh, air fluid levels that you weren't suspecting. Um, they can always maybe lead you to something that you hadn't first suspected. Uh, just a couple of quick examples of abdominal radiographs. This is a, a KUB um, as of a small bowel obstruction. You can see this is an erect patient. They're sitting upright um, and so you can see very clearly the air fluid levels in the small bowel. This is indicating an obstruction distal to the these air fluid levels. Now this one right here is of the stomach in the upper left quadrant. Um, and that's a that's a normal finding but in the small bowel that's abnormal this one is of a large bowel obstruction very similar to a small bowel just a little bit larger and the place that you find it will also help you determine where the etiology or the the obstruction occurred um, when reading abdominal radiographs Remember, you know, this, this takes a lot of practice, a lot of time put into them um, to pick up everything, but make sure you look at the whole film. Don't just look for the one thing that you suspect. Look at the whole film, um, take your time, and and also uh, these are they're very, very important and very um, good piece of, or a good tool for... Um, diagnosing problems. They're the, they're the third most common x-ray ordered and so get used to looking at them and, and you can learn a lot and help patients out quite a bit by, by understanding them.